I'm a total rookie to DIY audio with only a couple of successful subwoofer builds under my belt that you can actually check out in my library of videos. I decided to put my big boy pants on and tackle the task of assembling a DIY amplifier. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and like the video because I'm going to show you the trials and tribulations I experienced just ahead. After an interesting conversation with my buddy, which most of you know him as Toyd's DIY Audio, I decided I wanted to try to build the amplifier he originally built using amplifier boards from Parts Express. A huge thanks to all the folks at Parts Express for supporting this build. I had my reservations, and I cannot lie, I was nervous because I am not very techy when it comes to building electrical devices. It's way outside my comfort zone. However, Toyd assured me that I not only had his his build video, which if you guys are going to try this, I suggest using his tutorial as a reference, but I also had a phone a friend option if I get stuck, which was really cool. Like I said, I wasn't comfortable, but I was confident that whatever the outcome, this was going to be a learning experience and I would show the world how a complete novice tackled this project. Here's how it went down from beginning to end. I'm going to make a comprehensive list of parts and tools you'll definitely need to complete this project successfully, available in the description below. However, let's start with the basics. I use my trusty toolkit that I have used in the past on smaller projects. It includes an awesome little screwdriver with all the bits and little gadgets that you'll ever need. I also had a magnetic tray to catch all of the screws and small parts that could have gotten lost. I had a wire stripper, electrical tape zip ties, and in case I needed to do some core control, those zip ties could come in handy. And of course, the thing that made me most nervous, the Xtronic soldering iron. I have never soldered before, guys. So I was curious how bad this was gonna go. For those of you that know me personally, I should not be trusted with a pen capable of melting metal. However, we'll see how it goes. Those are the only parts I used for this project. Uh, not many tools at all, so go ahead and check that out in the description below. Following Toyd's video very closely, I was able to assemble the case, which I purchased from Gent Audio, which will also be in the description below. I connected the power button first, which is right here. Then I assembled the back panel, and there is an Easter egg, guys, somewhere in here in the video where I messed up. If you guys can catch it before I tell you at the end of the video, then comment below and tell me what it was. After the case was taking form, it was time to place the standoffs. This case has many holes on the bottom to fit different types of boards. However, for the purpose of this build, I show you here where I placed mine in the picture ahead. For this project, I used the Ice Power 200 ASC board and the Ice Power 200 AC board, making it a dual mono block class D amplifier with 200 watts per channel. You can do a bigger amp, which I thought about. However, for the purpose of this video and this project in general, I wanted to mirror Toyd's build to really test whether I can achieve that $3,000 sound for only around $300 all in. After the boards were secured to the case, I attached the cables that were pre-terminated per his video's instruction. When I needed to phone a friend was it was time to solder the wires together. And the soldering the wires to the speaker terminals and the XLR inputs got a little crazy. So these cables don't come color coded in any type of way that makes sense and his wire colors in the video were different than mine so he helped me identify what was what so I don't biff it. This was the hardest part. My soldering job was horrible. I had no clue what I was doing. However, I put it all together and plugged it in. I turned it on and guess what? It sounded horrible. It was distorting and was not, it was not what I expected at all. So I took the case apart. I started investigating what could have gone wrong. Well, for starters, I didn't attach the speaker inputs incorrectly. That was the Easter egg. So I had to reattach them correctly. And then I, when I was reattaching them, I discovered the solder wasn't creating the adhesion to the speaker terminals that I wanted. So I spent more time resoldering the wires. Now, just so you know, I didn't have a lot of wire to work with, so I had to make sure this was done right using what I had already stripped. 
So after resoldering the speaker terminals with the wires, I put it all back together and fired it up. It honestly sounded amazing. I was surprised how loud I was able to take it without any distortion whatsoever. I connected the amplifier to my Parasound P6 preamp and used my Premier DD15 CD player. The amplifier was connected to a pair of Triangle Bro 3s. It was super balanced, so I tweaked the tone control on the P6 a bit more than I would have with my Stark amp, which is naturally bright and bassy. However, after tweaking the tones, it was hard to tell between this little amp Amp and many amps I've tested. It had a cooler sound than I'm used to, but the power was there. It had great punch and did not disappoint. Would this contend with the $3,000 range as Toy had claimed in his video? Absolutely. I'd actually like to challenge any boutique brand out there charging between two to four grand for basically the same guts that are in this little guy and see if this $300 DIY project that took a total novice under three hours to build can have a major audible difference in sound quality. So thank you all for watching. If you'd like to chat more about this project or any of my other videos, make your way to our Discord channel or our Facebook group called Hi-Fi Audio Enthusiasts. Both links are down below. I want to thank my current patrons for the support. If you'd like to become a patron and find out how awesome it feels to help out a creator, that link is down below as well. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel guys and like the video because you'll want to stay tuned for my next video where I review the brand new Triangle Bro 9s. So stay tuned for that. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.